Let me just start today's video off by saying glaciers are really cool. Welcome to one of America's most breathtaking natural wonders, Glacier National Park. I'm about to make a whole video on some absolutely sick parts of Glacier, but in order to understand what the heck I'm talking about in that video, we first have to understand what exactly is a glacier anyway? Well, some might say the answer to this question is a glacier is a big hunk of ice. And while they are not wrong, they are also not entirely right because there is a whole lot more to glaciers than just that. In short, a glacier is not just any mass of ice, but a very, very dense body of ice that lasts throughout the year and is so heavy it compresses itself. And this heaviness and the fact that it compresses on itself actually gives the glacier some extremely unique and fascinating properties. And that's exactly what we're gonna get into in just a little bit. But first, let's keep talking about glaciers. Glaciers form when snow accumulates over a particular area for a long time, as in years and years. For a glacier to form, the annual snowfall must exceed the amount of annual snow melt. In other words, snow has to fall at a rate faster than it melts so the glacier can grow. If the snow melted faster than it fell, then everything would just melt and you wouldn't have anything exciting. Over time, the snow accumulates more and more and it starts to get heavy. If you've ever shoveled snow out of your driveway, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about because snow is surprisingly heavy when you get enough of it. For a forming glacier, each fresh layer of snowfall weighs down upon the deeper, older layers. The weight of all the snow that's accumulated creates a ton of pressure on these buried layers, and it compresses them. This compression actually deforms the snowflake and forces the snow together into a more granular, ice-like substance known as fern. Fern is basically the intermediate step on snow's journey to become ice. You see, ice and snow both are forms of frozen water, as I'm sure you know, but they have vastly different properties. So why is this the case? Well, the big difference between the pretty snow that we see falling from the sky and ice, like glacier ice, or even the ice we put in our drinks, is the amount of air inside it. Snow is a collection of ice crystals with a low density and airy structure, while ice is solid and dense. Think about if someone threw a snowball at you versus if they hurled a literal chunk of ice at you. Which one is heavier? Which one would hurt more? And most importantly, which one would you want to throw back at them to teach them a lesson? Maybe I shouldn't say that. Don't throw ice at people. If you compress snow enough, eventually you'll get all those air pockets out and jam it together into ice. But glacial ice isn't your ordinary block of ice because it is even more compressed than usual. A glacier is one gigantic, solid block of ice where nearly all the air has been squeezed out, and this can only happen after years and years of being compressed under an incredible amount of weight. So that clarifies a little bit more on what exactly is a glacier, but the coolness of glaciers doesn't stop there because they also have the ability to move, and to move without melting. Glaciers can move in a variety of different ways, but the main method is through something called creep, or internal deformation. Inside a glacier, the ice deforms and flows slowly under its own weight. This movement is facilitated by the extreme pressure actually melting and refreezing the ice at various points within the glacier. In other words, if you put ice under enough pressure, it will melt a little bit, but as soon as that pressure is released, it'll refreeze. To help you understand what I'm talking about, let's look at a deck of cards. Internal deformation works similarly to if you took a deck of cards and fanned them out. If you put a lot of pressure up top here and put it on a slight downward slope, just like a glacier has, eventually things are gonna start to slide. Over time, the ice crystals within the glacier melt and refreeze and they rearrange and slip past each other, allowing the glacier to flow. It's this property that has led to glaciers being called rivers of ice, because in a way they do flow like a river while remaining solid. I mean, I guess technically you could say that they melt very small parts of them at a time and that helps with the deformation so they're not completely remaining solid. But you know what? Everyone loves a good metaphor and for the most part, the glacier is remaining solid while it moves. There is also one more method of movement that we need to talk about today and that is something called basal sliding or slipping. I've saw both words being used. 
We just said that extreme pressure can melt the ice for brief periods of time, right? Well, at the bottom of the glacier, right where the ice meets rock, there is an insane amount of pressure. This often creates a thin film of melted ice, aka water, that lines the bottom of the glacier. This water acts as a lubricant that allows the glacier to move more rapidly than if it were only deforming internally. So there you have it, that is the basics of glaciers and how they move. And if you like this video, be sure to hit subscribe because I am going to be making a video on Glacier National Park, where we dive into the absolutely awesome parts of glaciers and answer questions like, why are glacial lakes turquoise? And how do ice caves form? It's gonna be super cool, so be sure to hit that subscribe button so that I can see you in the next one.